May the 10th, 2024. Guys, it looks like we're getting early impact from this group of CMEs. Now, I think there's going to be multiple, and they are, again, we have five coming now, according to Space Weather. But if you look right here, and we saw this this morning, suddenly, uh, just a few minutes ago, we had a sudden jump of uh, solar wind speed in the purple from 460, guys. Look at that. Two seven uh, six ninety nine. There's a seven in here, approaching a million miles an hour. That was quite a jump. Also, the temperature jumped with it. Look at that, and the plasma density. Remember, it was cruising down here around one this morning. Now we were seeing peaks ahead of the CME, as if it had some energy pushing ahead of it just a little bit. But right now we're cruising at around thirty, and that's high. We've got pressure on our plates right now. Now, what I did, I just came, I checked this, and uh, disconnected my solar panels. Anything you've got sensitive, it may be a good idea. Now, we don't know if it's going to be that severe, but that's a mighty powerful CME, that, a group of CMEs coming in. And so I prefer to be uh, cautious and uh, not have to replace some expensive panels because they've been paid for for a while, and... I use them in emergencies. They're, they're not full time, but anything you've got like that, it's a good time to think about cell phones, maybe even get your pets in, which we've done, and th which they do most of the time anyway. But uh, here we are. We are at the impact point. How much higher will it get? I don't know. But uh, this is, again, an early warning system. The impacts right now, if you guys are sensitive to this type of stuff, then you're probably already feeling it because that's not much of a time gap there traveling at this speed. Now, why did it come in early? Remember, it was projected to be moving at over 2 million miles per hour. And it may have been a little faster than they thought. It's the strongest uh, group like this that they've seen in a long time. But uh, I think that's what happened. The muzzle velocity was higher when it, it left the sun and it got here early. Now. Technically, they're correct because, remember, I've always said it's a plus or minus seven hours, and we were looking at an impact point uh, around 6 p.m. Central Time. It's 12.37 here now, so they're within that window, and I guess that's a good thing because when you're, we're dealing with this type of energy, and this is just the impact right there of the first section of five, a couple of them are very close together, and you're going to see some jumps. But right now, you're probably going to start seeing an uptick in quakes. And I would watch because we've seen movement in what's called the North American Craton, guys. Remember that? Most of the U.S. and Canada are on that rock. What is not on that rock are the coastal areas around the nation. But anyway... Watch for that because we have been seeing pressure. Not only that, the heat that you see coming in right here, what does that do in the green right here? See that jump? That goes into your magnetic lines of force and it's transferred into the core of the planet, and your magma starts to heat up. When magma moves, what happens? Plates move. Tectonic plates shift. Let's take a look at something else real quick. Now, Space Weather is picking it up also. It's one of the links on our website at bpearthwatch.com. It says the first CME has arrived. The first of six. I said five. Now there's six. The first of six hurled toward Earth by giant sunspot AR3664 just hit the Earth's magnetic field. That's what you just saw. And remember, I was showing you what to watch this morning. And that's a good way to do it but because... The satellites are not lying. When they, the impact comes across them, it picks it up right then, takes a very short time for it to transmit that energy back to, or that information back to the Earth where it can be decoded, and we're seeing it on the graphs we were just looking at. It says this total is now six following the morning's X3.9 class flare from giant sunspot AR3664. All six storm clouds are captured and the time lapse that you're seeing from Soho. And you've got Mercury and Jupiter also. But these are, there's one, two, three, four, five. They're showing five here. One, two, three, maybe six. But anyway, the storms have just begun. That's my point. 
Now, if we look at this chart, they have not changed the timing back here at 2300 hours, an hour before midnight tonight, universal time, then it would, would have been 5 p.m. East Coast. They um, are in that window, the seven hours, like I said. Now, what has not changed is, again, the timing here doesn't matter now. It's irrelevant. We know it's here. But uh, the impact that we're seeing I'm thinking we're just at the front of it. Notice right here, the earth is in a green dot. Notice how the red, let me pull that up just a little bit, just, just to, so I can uh, explain what I'm seeing with this event. Maybe you can see it. The earth again is in the green dot right there. Notice the front edge of the first, of the second CME has already overtaken the bad one, the black one right there. That's so we're seeing the impact more than likely of the smaller CME that was behind this. Let me back it up. Notice again what we're dealing with. This CME appears to be the second one, but it's, they're all kind of tied together in a group. It overtakes the black one, the most powerful one, and it looks like it bypasses it right in here. See that? So what we're seeing, I think, is the impacts of the weaker wave. And we're about to see the impacts of the larger one. So, again, I think that we're going to see the solar wind speed, plasma density, and temperature continue to increase. Again, you know, if you got, I would have my pets inside. I would have my all of my electronics uh, either wrapped up in about two or three layers of foil as far as your phones and things like that. And, and again, if you've got radio communication antennas outside your house, CB and all, it would, would not hurt to uh, disconnect your coaxial. And you know what I'm talking about. It never hurts. If you got an outside antenna, it wouldn't hurt to undo it for a moment for your television. It's not going to hurt. You only have to pull it back in, right? We don't know the impact. During the Carrington event, they did not have this technology, guys. There was no way to let the world know what was coming. But uh, remember, it, and it was stronger. They were saying that these flares were larger than these flares and all of that. But this is the largest one, and we haven't had this G4 magnetic storm in over 20 years, which again spans almost two solar cycles. But guys, we're watching it. I told you I'd give you some updates. Again, if you um, think about what you may not want to be impacted as this goes forward, and if you're in an area with where salt, uh, fault zones, or known, keep an eye on that too because it's going to be a little stronger impact than what we've seen in quite a while. And the auroras going into this um, will uh, be very bright. Let me say this also before I end this. Because of the early impact, what has happened, say it would have come in at 5 o'clock this afternoon, the, we would have not on the East Coast been as affected because we would not be pointing directly at the sun. You understand what I'm saying? Tokyo and um, Japan was pointed directly at the sun when the solar flares hit and caused the Fukushima quake. But right now, the entire nation is pointed directly at the sun, right? So these the earlier arrival does have an effect. And that means that we will have a greater impact on this side of the entire planet. And we're watching it. Watch for updates, guys. Let me know of anything that you see or experiencing or heard about in the comments, it's a heads up, be safe.